Hi, I'm Tom Stone, the National Sales Manager of Industrial Markets for Thermal Care. Thermal Care has been in the process cooling business for over 50 years and serves over 50 different industries. So, moving back into some of the considerations when you're getting ready to, you know, uh, buy a chiller and decide how you're going to uh, incorporate it into your facility is where are you going to put it? Uh, indoor or outdoor are the two main points there. Uh, the first is the ambient conditions. So, if, you know, are you in Phoenix or are you in Chicago? Uh, you're going to experience different ambient temperature ranges. So, you want to be able to protect on both that high side and the low side. So, very hot conditions. And as we talked about with the increase in ambient affecting the capacity, we want to make sure that our unit's going to be able to, one, handle the heat, but also still be able to meet the cooling demands of the system. Uh, from a low side, it's where we talk about, you know, the, the glycol mixture to protect that fluid, because even if I am operating at a 50 degree set point, which technically would not require any glycol, I'm still sending that water outside now. And so in the winter, there exists a possibility where that water could be trapped out there if you know, a power loss or something of that nature, and then it could freeze and damage the equipment. So those are some key things to consider for indoor and outdoor. Uh, dusty, dirty environment. So this unit is inside of a facility, but it's, you know, there's a machine tool shop or something where there's a lot of uh, dirt and debris that can be generated in the air. That can actually coat the condenser of the unit and affect its ability. Same thing for outside, if it's gonna be located uh, near a, you know, a dusty environment, a gravel parking lot, something like that, that will start to coat that condenser and affect its ability to reject the heat of the system, thus affecting its ability to cool. So you need to be cognizant of those things. Uh, if you're putting it inside, how noisy is it gonna be? If you're putting it outside, how noisy is it gonna be? Is your neighbor gonna be upset that you're running a very noisy chiller? So you wanna be uh, cognizant of those as well. Uh, and then, you know, that heat dissipation, because we're ultimately just, you know, discharging this heat to the area surrounding the chiller. And if that's inside of a building, that could be an additional load on the, uh, the HVAC system. If it's outside, is it in a confined space? Could I be recycling that hot air back into the chiller again? And thus, you know, making it seem like that ambient temperature is going up when I'm really just recirculating hot air. Um, are you going to be able to access the unit? Is it up on a roof? Is it, you know, outside where somebody has to walk? Do you need a remote monitoring capabilities? Those are some distant things. Uh, and then finally, the distance to the usage point. So we have to send this water out to whatever process it is. If it's an injection molding machine, a laser, whatever is generating that heat that we're cooling, we need to transfer that energy from the machine to our water that's going to come back to our chiller so we can ultimately remove it from the system. I hope that helps you guys and thank you for your time.